The greatest ideas have come from sitting on the toilet. Every day, some company, individual or group, is known for giving the public a load of bullshit. Come here to get your daily dose of shit by Alan Cousin. It's time you hear the shit everyone wants to know. Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. As always, this is your daily dose of shit. We're doing it a little early today because you know what? I said, why not? I'm home. Let me get it out the way. So, as I said, this is your daily dose of shit, starring your host, Wow, Alan Cousin. So, today's topic probably be something that everybody has either gone through or basically has dealt with in some ways. And I personally thought about it when I was just, you know, sitting on the porcelain toilet, as always. And just enjoying my private time. And I thought about it. I said, Jesus, I'm so happy I don't have to deal with this shit. So the topic today is finding people to date and getting relationships in the 21st century versus back in the 80s and 90s. And finding real people versus fake people. Now, I don't know about you, you know, but I would think that this should be something that you should definitely understand. Because when you really think about it, Today's society of people are definitely not the same society 20 to 30 years ago. You know, think about the ability of when you were probably in your 20s and, you know, in the 80s or 90s and you wanted to go, you know, find someone that possibly you can go have a date with or, you know, get to know. You basically had a fair variety of choices. I mean, it wasn't just a simple let me go here and let me go here. I mean, you had parties you can go to. Uh, you had the church, you know, let me go to church. And after church, I might see somebody I want to talk to after I get out of church. You had grocery stores, basically, where, you know, hey, I want to go to the grocery store, give me something to eat, get shopping. But at the same time, I might find something that uh, I might want to have interest in other than my groceries. Uh, or like I said, you could just go to the park. And basically say, you know what, I'm going to go to the park today and I'm going to just relax with my dog or just relax, you know, on my own. And who knows, might find somebody in the park, decide to go approach them and talk. That was then. Now, let's come fast forward to the 21st century. And let's talk about how these individuals literally try to find someone that they want to date or even more so try to find someone to get into a relationship with. Well, first of all, there is no such thing as getting, you know, into a conversation. Because most of the people today, most of the kids today, I'm going to say kids because you know, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, uh, compared to my age. Most of those individuals don't even know how to talk. And that's kind of scary when you think about it, but it's so, so true. Like, they literally don't know how to, have, how to start a conversation. And you're thinking, okay, what do you mean, Alan? They can't start a conversation. I'm talking about, like, they will literally look at you, and you'll be like, hey, what's up? And they're like, hi. Yeah, how, how are your day? Uh, it's okay. And don't talk about it if you like say, hey, let's really have a good conversation and talk about some hot topic that's going on today because then their instant reaction is, I don't know what to do. Oh my God, he wants me to have a conversation. Yes, that is, I've actually had a situation where I tried to talk to someone and that was literally their reaction. So... I don't know about you, but that's a bit scary. And here's the thing that really gets me. They don't know about going out and seeing people in real life. All they know is Tinder, plenty of fish, kick, or some other dating app that's out there where you know they're just swiping and swiping and swiping and that's it. 
and they're not swiping in most cases for a relationship. No, 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 no. They're swiping in most cases just to go ahead and say, let's see who I can get with today that could be my buddy for about an hour or two because, you know, I'm horny and someone out there is just as horny as me. And that's really it. Now, don't get me wrong, fellas. I mean, I understand. You know, there were times that fellas, you know, and girls were like, hey, I need to get some groove on and, you know, I ain't trying to just deal with nobody. I just want to kind of pleasure myself. Yeah, and you go to the bars. I get that. You go to the bars, you look for a drink, or you buy someone to drink, and basically, that's the way it worked. And, of course, you know, that was the fun part because there were so many times I remember going out and not only would I try to hit on girls myself, which was, of course, exciting because, you know, you always had the anxiety of whether or not it was going to work. You had to come up with the instant icebreaker and how to, you know, get their attention and make them want to give you their number or how to make sure that they were going to call you more or maybe get with you that night. And trust me, people don't understand communication is so much of an important factor when it comes to dating or just getting with a person, you know, for a short amount of time because, what you say is literally your first impression and there is no second chances and i can oh my god the, the, the things i heard when i would be out there just people watching and hearing these people try to approach other women or guys you know being approached by females now the lucky thing is females normally has the upper hand see because females can be approached by guys and be approached by women and in most cases Back in the 80s and 90s, females didn't have to approach you. You always had to approach them. Now, today it's a little different. You actually have some girls that will approach you and ask you out if they think, you know, there's an opportunity and they fancy you. But it's just hilarious when I used to hear these pickup lines, you know, of what they would say to try to start that conversation. Now, there are some crazy pickup lines, okay? But let me tell you, some of these pickup lines I heard, you literally would be like, no, you didn't. And why did you? Like, for instance, I want to say a few pickup lines that literally, when I heard this in person from someone else, not me, by the way. So this is not me giving a pickup line. This is someone else I heard giving a pickup line. I literally was thinking, no, you didn't. And why did you do that? Okay. One, are you Wi-Fi? Because I am totally feeling the connection. Oh, no. No, just, just, just go away. Just, just, this is where you just, just say, go away. So, um, if I had a nickel for every time I saw someone as beautiful as you, I'd have five cents. I don't even, I don't even understand that. If I had a nickel for every time I saw someone as beautiful as you, I'd have five cents. Don't. Don't know. Don't. I don't even know. Hmm. Know what's on my menu? Me and you. Really? You don't need to even be out of your house. You need to go back where you came from, and you need to go learn how to be a man. Okay. That. <laughs> no. Okay. You and I are like nachos with jalapenos. I'm super cheesy. You're super hot, and we belong together, and that might make her laugh, but really, you need to think of something better. Just giving, just being honest, just being honest. But these are actual lines, pickup lines. I heard, like I heard somebody say this to someone else, and the funny thing is, they thought they were actually saying something grand that would work. So that tells you what the 21st century is all about today, ladies and gentlemen, when you actually have these kind of pickup lines and they're like, yeah, this is what I'm going to say and it's going to work and she's going to dig me. No, she's going to kick your ass and say, get out of my way. So now I will say this. One thing I've noticed is the way things are now today, because see, back in the days, there's some things that haven't changed. I'll be honest with you. Like one of the things I noticed about people getting with others is they always pay attention to the visuals and don't get me wrong visuals are important to a certain extent but you have to understand you want something in the i mean i don't know about you but i'm looking at it like i want to make sure there's something up there in the head too not just beauty but brains i mean because you know don't get me wrong it's nice to have somebody that's cute and 
handsome and beautiful, but if they're dumb as rocks, like you really can't have a conversation with him situation, do you really want to just have a relationship with that type of individual? Most likely it will just be friends with benefits. I'm pretty sure that's all it will be is friends with benefits. But there are people out there, you know, that just all they're looking for is like the car they're wearing, you know, driving, or the clothes they're wearing, you know. And then don't talk about these women that will literally go to the shopping store, shopping mall, and buy a hot outfit, keep the tag on, buy nice clothes, nice shoes, put tape on the bottom of the heels, wear it the night to get people to pay attention to them, of course, and either get friends with benefits or get someone to possibly be interested in them, and then take all that back the next day for a return to get a refund. And this happens, my friends. Like, this literally happens. People do this. So it's, it's funny when you think about that, you know, like, the things people will do to get attention, you know. And, like, I will never forget a friend of mine. I just, like, I didn't know how to feel for him personally. So this guy, right, we're hanging out, you know, we're in Atlanta. It's a club. Have a good time. And he sees this girl, and he's like, oh, my God, look at her. I mean, she's got everything in the right place. She's just perfect. Oh, I got to get with this. And he, I was like, hey, you do you because I'm good right now. I got a relationship. I've got a little girlfriend, so I'm good. But you go ahead and do you. So he did him. And he went up there, and, you know, he did his little icebreaker. He was pretty good at that. He was pretty smooth. I granted, I give it to him. He, he, he knew how to do things. He handled things. And sure enough, boom. He got her, enjoyed the night with her. Later, they got back home to her place. No, his place, actually. It wasn't hers, it was his. And, you know, he had a great time, had sex with her. And then it happened. It happened. He woke up. Now, when he woke up, he's looking at it like, all right, mm, you know, she was cute and everything. So, yeah, I'm going to turn around. You know, might fix her some breakfast because, you know, I might actually want to keep this one for a little bit, you know. And when he turned around, he saw something that he could not even recognize. And what I mean by this is, first of all, the hair she was wearing was a wig. The hair underneath her hair was weave mixed with hair. Her eyelashes totally fake. She was tanned in certain areas, but not all areas was tanned. Of course, all her nails were fake. Uh, even some of her lip was kind of like inflated, you know. And he just was like, and then of course he had spanks on. So of course he didn't realize that because he had a lot of drinks. So they still got it, got it on, but he didn't really pay attention. Plus he was pretty much drunk, so, you know, he's still seeing her looking like, oh, hell, yeah, this is good. But he's not drunk anymore. And so he saw a girl that he thought was perfect in every way, now with spanks off, eyelashes off, fingernails off, wet wig off, weave, old weave, they've been in there for too long, weave, with hair mixed, and certain areas tan and certain areas not. And like I said, remember, this was at his place, not hers. So he's looking at it like, okay, I need to wake her up and she needs to go. And that's basically, you know, a true story. So just let you know, sometimes what you see is not always what you get. And like I said, a lot of women, they'll look for those fancy cars, you know, they'll look for those fancy clothes, you know, because they're thinking, okay, fancy car, fancy clothes, he's doing well for himself. Hey, just because he got that don't mean he can afford it. Because first of all, a lot of these guys that you see with this fancy car, fancy clothes might be living in an apartment complex with four other brothers or four other guys, basically. So they can afford that fancy car and those fancy clothes, you know. And then you got to think about a guy who really understands money. And this is just being honest. And I'm going to say guys because unfortunately I can't really say a lot of girls tend to understand money because... I mean, hey, y'all women keep the world going because the economy relies on y'all to shop. So, but guys, on the other hand, a guy who likes to understand money is not going to spend a lot of money on things. He's going to spend a 
percentage of what he makes on what he gets. So he's going to basically be like, look, I'm going to give me a nice pair of jeans, and I'm going to get a nice pair of shoes, but I ain't going to spend too much on it. But, you know, I mean, it's going to be quality, but it's going to last, but I'm not going to be trying to show off because I don't have to show off because, you know what, I'm doing well for myself, I'm confident, and I got money, and I'm successful. So really, I don't have to do too much. Now, you, of course, you got those that are successful. It's going to have a Porsche. You're going to have a Lamborghini. But really, those that are really thrifty and want to keep their money and keep making money off their money, they're going to be ones that's going to drive that Honda Accord or that Honda Civic or, you know, they're going to drive a Nissan Altima or Maxima. They're going to drive something that's still nice but it's not well, really, really expensive. Or they might even drive a nice Lexus, basically, you know. But it's going to be something that's still mid-range between twenty to thirty, forty thousand dollars tops. They're not gonna be looking for no dag on eighty to hundred thousand dollar car because literally, why? I mean, why are you gonna waste money on something that's gonna basically depreciate in value anyway? That's not a business man aspect. So that's why I'm like you're looking at people and you're trying to figure out what guy has something and you're not looking for the right thing. Now ladies, you have to understand there's two things you always look at when you're looking for a guy. And I'm assuming that you would know this, but in case you don't know, let me help you out. You look at the watch and you look at the shoes. I'm going to say this again. You want to really understand if a guy is doing well for himself, you look at the watch and you look at their shoes. Why do you look at their watch? Because their watch will tell you how well they're doing. Because it's going to be a nice watch. Not too expensive, not too cheap. But it's going to be a watch that's going to be quality and that, that you know it's going to last a long time. Their shoes, well, that's going to be quality shoes. It's going to be something that's nice, not too expensive, not too cheap, mid-range, maybe two, three hundred dollar one, you know, shoes. But they're going to be clean. They're going to be nice and clean because they're going to love the appearance of taking care of themselves and because they take care of themselves and want to keep things for a long period of time they're going to take care of the stuff that they buy so so i'm just letting you know you know look at the car and <laughs> eh, especially today when you shoot you get a nice car 10 years old and basically it could be a porsche you won't know it's a 10 year old porsche you might it still be you might they could lie to say it's a 2021 because they get the porsche and change the frame and boom it looks new but it's not you know, so you can't really deal with the cars nowadays. You got to think about going past that. You know, think about are they living in a home? Are they living in an apartment? Are they in a condo? Are they living by themselves? Do they have a job? What do they do for a living? These are things that let you know if they're qualified to be something you want to deal with. Look at their ring finger. You know, make sure that their ring doesn't have a light side on the finger because they're taking it off. You know, think about the phone. Are they getting a lot of phone calls when you're going out? Are they getting, you know, situations where they gotta always say, I'll be right back. And you know, they have to leave to talk on the phone because if it's a business, they might not have to leave. If it's somebody's personal, they have somebody, or you know, they got baby daddy issues and they don't want you to hear how many babies they didn't have for how many mamas out there, they gonna get up and walk away. So you got to think about these things. You got to pay attention, basically. But also, like I said, it goes both ways. Fellas, you got to look at this girl and be like, okay, this is how she look. But how she going to look in the morning? How much of that I'm looking at right now is real? And how much of that I'm looking at right now is fake? Okay, because let me tell you, real and fake, Today, it's hard to really discover what's real, what's not, and what's not. So, you really got to pay attention. You really got to pay attention on that. So, But one other thing is, most people today don't even want relationships. Yeah, I'm saying it. Most people today are like, look, I'm just trying to find somebody to have sex with, to get with. Hell, if it's friends with benefits, that's even better. You know, but literally, I'm just trying to get my groove on, and then peace. And... It's so funny now because there's a lot of poly relationships, but they're open poly relationships where you're literally getting a lot of friends with benefits, basically. That's what you're getting, friends with benefits. But you're getting friends with benefits that you're going to utilize on a scheduled basis. So basically, you're going to deal with, you know, Sally on Monday, Wendy on Wednesday, and Sue on Friday, you know, or you're going to deal with Ben on Monday. James on Wednesday, 
and Oliver on Friday, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, this whole poly thing is really picking up to the point where they say, hey, sh well, why get one when I can get two, three, or four? And, and basically, they're all in agreement. Hey, they know about each other. We don't have to deal with each other, but it's all good. Then you got your closed poly. Well, of course, they know about each other. They deal with each other, and they like it. Like, think about it. If you're a girl that's bisexual or a guy that's bisexual, okay, well, guess what? You can get a poly where you can get both, live together, and you got your cake, and you get to bake your cake and eat it, too. I mean, you think about it. There's some benefits to that, you know? Not to mention if you're living in a poly lifestyle, basically, and you're living together, shoot, that's rent freeways. That's electricity freeways, water freeways. I mean, food is free. I mean, it's got the benefits and perks when you think about it. It's just the whole deal is that you got to find the right relationships with the right people that you can deal with. But like I said, this poly thing is just growing. It's like, boom. It's going, and I don't even, I mean, it's really becoming the next norm of the relationship. It's like the norm, especially for Generation Z and, you know, a little bit of Generation Y, you know, they're like, Psh. like, this is the thing. Like, I'm enjoying it. I like it. Why change? Why get married? I mean, hell, if you get married and you don't like her, you got to pay to get out of the situation anyway. Psh. So why do that? And then basically, you got a situation where you got someone who doesn't mind you getting with them, you both getting something out of it, and you get to do it with other people too, where's the problem? So, I'd say relationships totally has changed from the time when I had to do relationships years ago. Like, now I'm good. I got my girls. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Every so often, maybe I want to flirt, but that's just a flirt. Or I want to do, you know, of course, do my window shopping. They do their window shopping, but it's just what? Window shopping. You ain't taking the product home. You're just looking at it. Nothing's wrong with that. So it's just interesting to me, though, how you really got to think about the differences of how people hook up today compared to how the people hook up 20 and 30 years ago. And one thing that pisses me off, I don't know about you, but this shit just got to stop. OK, and I'm I, whoever, whoever's listening, please understand this shit got to stop. I hate. When people have dating profiles and you're looking at them and they have photos there and these photos are literally not joking. Five, maybe even ten years old. Are you serious? Like, really? Like, come on, man. What you trying to do? You know, can you at least have it that when I meet you in person, I'm seeing the same person that's on the photo. I mean, what's the problem? Have confidence in yourself. Because honestly, at least let me know what I'm getting. That way, if I say I want to take you out, then I know, hey, I want to take you out because I, this is what I'm seeing. But also, you know, I want to take you out because this is what I'm seeing. It's like, why are you going to show me a picture 10 years old, 5 years old, that might be 20 or 30, 40, even 50 pounds lighter than what you are today? And you really believe, you really believe that when not a problem, when I meet you in person, I'm not going to notice a difference. Really? You really think, no, I'm not going to see that you're like 50 pounds heavier. <laughs> and come on, I'm going to see that you're 50 pounds heavier, okay? And then another thing, <laughs> this, and this is a true story, okay? I found the girl years ago, of course, when I was on dating, all right? Dating, went on a profile, went on a dating uh, website because it wasn't really apps back then yet. Looked at this profile. Girl was decent. I ain't trying to look for no perfect girl because honestly, the, the cuter you are, the crazier you are. So honestly, that's my personal and that's a fact, ladies and gentlemen. It's like the cuter these girls are or the, more, or the hotter these guys are, the crazier they tend to be. It's like crazy eye effect addiction. I mean, literally, it's the truth. It's a fact, and I've yet to displace this because there's so many things that has proven it to always be true. You get the girl that's the best, you're going to have crazy shit all the fucking year. Like, lifelong crazy, just so you know. But anyway, I see this girl. She's cool. You know, average, very nice, pretty, and cute. I said, good. Okay, let's meet up. All right, blah, blah. We talked for a little bit, and we finally decided to meet and everything. And, of course... And this gets me, because not only did we meet up, no, she had to come from a different city 
So I flew her in. Yes, you heard this right. I flew her in for the weekend. Okay. Meet at the airport. The girl I saw who was showing on the photo, maybe like 160, 170, 57. Now I see this girl, 5'5, 290 pounds. And I'm like, hey, hi, um, can I help you? Oh, I'm Sally. You're Sally. Yeah, I'm Sally. How you doing, Alan? I'm like, oh, I'm doing great. Hey, I'm fine. So you're Sally? Yeah, I'm Sally. And I'm thinking here, okay. Girl just flew in. Uh, she's staying the weekend. I paid for it. There's two things I can do here. A, I can be the gentleman and still go with this. B, I can go, uh, yeah, this ain't going to work and you need to go fly your ass back home. And I don't know how you're going to get that, but you're going to have to find a way to get that because you ain't staying with me. So, of course, the guy, being the man I really am. I, of course, chose A. And I still went out with her for the weekend. We went to play golf, went to the movies, went to nice dinner, and it was nice, you know? Watched TV and even cuddled a little bit because, you know, the way I looked at it was, yeah, she, she fucked me. She played the game. She was wrong. But guess what? Just because she messed up don't mean I need to go ahead and mess up too. I need to be the better man. And I was the better man. And you know what? To this day, that young lady, Sarah, is my friend. To this day, we're friends. But it's just, what I'm saying is, why do that? Because when I finally got to ask her, why did she put that photo on? It's one thing if she would have said, oh, well, that was my old photo 10 years ago. And I was just, you know, I wanted to show how I used to look. And I'm trying to get back there. No, 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 no. This was a photo of her sister. Yeah, you heard me. This was a sister photo. So not even a photo of her at all. She used her photo of her sister to go ahead and post for herself what are you doing and why are you doing it and i just don't understand it i just I, I i can't even i can't even okay but these things happen today so all i gotta say is thank god i don't have to deal with the shit and i feel so bad for these these people today that that literally are trying to go find a relationship and 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 really trying like really trying because oh god I, I just i just don't even you have a better chance of winning a good five thousand dollars at the lottery than finding a relationship easy because it, 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 oh god i don't even know where to start so that's just the thing, you know, and then a lot of these women have to realize now, you know, back in the day, it was like, huh, 10 women for every man. So, you know, basically, you know, you can, you had that privilege of, you know, I'm cute, I'm slim, you know, I'm in, I'm in, I'm fit, you know, I can, you know, be a little bit of a bitch sometimes. I can be a little arrogant sometimes because you know what? I still got one, a few people that you can choose from. Today, psh, well, it's like 50 to 1, 40 to 1, 30 to 1. So, honestly, it's like, yeah, you're cute, you're cocky and arrogant, but guess what? Oh, wait, she's cute, she's not cocky and arrogant, so, yeah, see you later. I'm going to go talk to her now, and I'm pretty sure I'll get her because she's less cocky and arrogant than you. So that's the thing. Today is really interesting because it's almost like a modeling fetish thing, you know, like modeling, right? You know, you get into modeling about 14, 15, 16, and literally, I mean, uh, back in the day, they would tell you, once you hit your 30s, you're pretty much extinct in the modeling business. Like, it's like, okay, you're the dinosaur. You might get a kid if you're lucky. Runway, it ain't happening. <laughs> you better start looking at the magazine and the, uh, you know, photo magazine shops and catalog opportunities because, yeah, commercialization and uh, runway, it, yeah, it's not your cup of tea anymore. And honestly, it's getting like that with women now. Like men literally are finding women, 20, 21, 22, hitting up, hooking up with them. Keep them for about maybe six, seven years. Maybe if they're nice, 10, right? Then afterwards, they're like, hmm, 
Yeah, you're 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 in your thirties now. Yeah, you're kind of old. Yeah, you're 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 kind of used up. Yeah, I'm done. Bye. Have a good day. See ya. And they do. It. They leave and go back and find another twenty, twenty-five year old girl and start all over again. Because it's so interesting when a girl gets older and becomes a woman and she gets older, she literally loses the attraction for men. But when a man gets older, they literally gain the attraction from women and young women at that. Don't understand it, can't explain it, maybe because they feel like the man's more settled and because they've been through all the bullshit of being a stupid ass boy, so now they basically got a brother who have better brains on their you know, in their head. I don't get it, but all I know is it's just amazing how women get older and that we don't want them. And men get older, and the girls do want them. I mean, there's so many fucking young women looking for daddy figures. Not to mention a lot of them probably didn't have daddies. Or their daddies basically fucked them all up in the head. That now they didn't get enough attention as a daddy should have. That they now need a male figure that could be a daddy. I mean, it's so many things, so many reasons. But main thing, it's just interesting how you think about it and you hear about that. And you're like, wow. That's America. That's, that's reality today, ladies and gentlemen. Reality today. So when you get older, you might want to think, you know, am I going to be kicked to the curb soon? Does he love me as much as he used to? Maybe I shouldn't have had sex all the time. And now he's not really digging me as much because there's nothing exciting about me anymore. You know, you got to bring something to the table. Think about it, you gotta bring something to the table because if you don't, just as quickly as you got in, will be just as quickly as they let your ass out. <laughs> and that is a fact. So anyway, uh, enough about me talking. Let's give you some music. So I'm gonna go ahead and play some music, uh, give you a little insight, you know, from relationships, from a musical standpoint. So let's go ahead and go with Cardi B. Yeah, she's pretty cool, you know, I like her for a point. I mean, there's some times when, eh, but for the most part, she's a pretty cool cat. So, we're going to play I Like It from Part Cardi B. Enjoy. Yeah, 
suka, suka, tú que va medio y se fue de pecho como Jimmy Luca. Te vamos a tumbar la peluca y arranca pa'l carajo, cabrón, que a ti no te va a pasar la boca. Mi tele y Valenciaga me reciben en la entrada. Pa, 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 sí, like a Mary Gaga. Y no te me hagas, eh, que en cover de vivo tú has visto mi cara. Eh, no salgo de tu mente, donde quiera que viajes, escuchado mi gente. Eh. Ya no soy high, high, soy como el de esta rosa. Yo soy el que se la vive y también el que la goza. Goza, goza, es la cosa. Cardi B, I like it, which of course, you know, pretty much she's letting you know, hey, this is what I want, this is what I need, and a lot of women nowadays, I, I will give it to you, you know, I'll, your females out there, y'all pretty much y'all let, let us know, this is what you want, this is what you need, but I will say this, it takes some time, because if you're like 25 and older, you kind of now have that maturity level where you're like, look, I know what I need in life, I'm about to get, you know, close to the 30s, I'm looking for a man. So I'm pretty much wanting to know this is what I look for, this is what I want, this is what I'm giving, this is what I'm offering. But if you're like hmm, 23 and under, yeah, you you better have a fucking brain to the point where you can have telepathy because they do not, and I repeat, they do not tell you what they want or what they need. They think they know what they want or what they need, but really all they know is, I want sex. I need sex. Give me sex. Oh, yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll do other stuff, too, but, yeah, I need affection. I need attention. I need sex. And that's basically it. I mean, if you get a girl that's 23, you know, like 17 to 23, pretty much that's all you got to do. Just deliver some sensual goods, ever so often feed them, and you're done. It's almost like a pet, you know, so you're not taking them for a walk, though. You're just like... Okay, gotta feed you a little bit. Oh, you want sex today? Okay, there you go. You want a blowjob? Oh, okay, and there you go. Okay, now go watch TV. Okay, I'll talk to you later. All right. Oh, I'll give you attention. Okay, there you go. And, that's, and honestly, those attention whores, God, it's like, hold on a minute. I know you expect me to give you attention, but is there a time when I don't have to give you attention? Like, can I get attention to myself? Like, can I have some space? Like, I need some space. Like, I really need some time alone because when they say i'm an attention whore no no they are not lying they are like an attention whore like they need it they breathe on it it's like if you don't give them 10 percent attention they then told you you ain't giving me enough attention at all i'm like hold on i didn't give you 90 percent of my life and you gonna leave me now because i didn't hang with you for an hour and you cheated on me because i didn't give you sex for one day okay but see like I said girls you have to understand today now there's a whole lot of you and there's not a whole lot of us so honestly you know the guys have the upper hand now girls y'all used to have the upper hand but now it's kind of like eh, you can kind of pick and choose and if you say no then you know they got like 39 other girls that will say yes and guys, they get a little cocky now to the point where they pretty much tell you this is what they want, this is what they need. So, with that being said, I'm just going to go ahead and let the song talk about it. So, because, you know, like I said, you got those guys out there, especially those bad boys, because girls love bad boys. You know, they're like, I'm about the bad boy now, enjoy myself, be wild. But then, of course, you know, even though I'm going to be wild and freaky and basically get used up, then when I get older and I'm looking for a baby and a father, then I'm going to go ahead and get the good guy. But, you know, right now while I'm cute and while I'm just, you know, the hot picking, 
yeah, I'm not going to deal with the nerd. I'm not going to deal with the good guy. I'm just going to deal with the bad boy, you know, that probably don't have no life, that probably gets in trouble all the time, probably has a bad credit score, probably has hardly any money. But, you know, he's a bad boy, and that's all that really matters. All I got to say is one thing. Stupid. But, hey, you live and you learn, right? So, let's go ahead and play this song about the bad boys and what they like, right? We're going to play Taste by Tiger. There you have it, Taste by Tiger. And you know what's interesting, and I really think about this. So you know, I was talking about how you know how it's hard, and how changes we've had from 20 and 30 years ago to meeting people, and of course how you meet people now. But what gets me now is, you know, dating apps was the thing. Like if you want to meet somebody, okay, go on dating app, you meet somebody, because guess what? It's a dating app, that's why they have it. It's an app for dating. You know, or if you want to hook up, there's hookup apps. You know, if you just want to have sex, there's sex apps. I mean, pretty much nowadays, there's an app for anything you want for the most part. And if there isn't one, trust me, it's coming around the corner sooner than you know. But what gets me 
is now, and this has been going on for a couple of years now, social media has gotten so involved that now it's not like, oh, you know, I'm going to hook up with somebody by just going on a dating app, or I'm just going to, you know, find somebody by going on a sex app, or I'm going to get a, you know, friendship benefits app. No, 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 no. I'm going to go ahead and go on Facebook. I'm going to go look for a woman or a man. Or I'm going to go ahead and go on, you know, Twitter or Instagram. Or come find me a woman or a man. Um, yeah, I don't know about you, but I went on Facebook because I'm pretty much connected with friends and family. Now, granted, it does hit friends and family. So maybe you might be trying to connect with some new friends. But I don't know. It's just the whole thing of you sending me a message to connect with me as a friend. And I'm thinking you want to become my friend, but not sure why. Next thing you know, you're trying to find out how much money I got. Can I take you out? You know, uh, am I available? I'm like, hold on a minute. This is Facebook. This is this is Facebook. Now, I like to, maybe it's just me because, you know, I'm a little older, but I'm just like, why are you using Facebook and Twitter and Instagram to hook up? I mean, Instagram, I know, you you know, it's, you get an instant photo, so I mean, but you're promoting yourself, but maybe, and I'm thinking network for business, but I mean, hey, maybe Instagram is the network for connecting up, you know, friends with family, friends with business, friends with benefits, I don't know, Psh, hey, maybe it's, maybe I'm just not seeing the clear picture, because I looked at it as a networking base of family and other things, but not as a, I'm going to get a hookup tonight, because I'm going to go find somebody on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, and we're going to get our groove on. I mean, that's the new thing, I guess, because trust me, even at this point in time, I still get women connecting with me, and then I say, okay, I guess they won't be my friend, and next thing you know, they trying to get in my pants. And I'm like, damn, like, it's only been 20, not even 24 hours. But I hear guys do the same thing to my girls. I mean, they're playing on games. Hold on. Games. Like, they'll download a game, like, you know, Yahtzee or whatever. And they'll have somebody who wants to challenge them in a game. And they say, okay, I accept the challenge. And while they're playing the game, the person's texting them, asking how they're doing and if they're single. Okay, you're on a game app for playing games. This is not an app to get a hookup. But clearly, that's the case. People do that now. So I don't know. It's just interesting. And, you know, speaking of Instagram, like I said, and dating apps, can you please, and I'm talking about both sides, but more so the women, please, more so the women, can you please think about when you're showing off and you're looking for somebody to take you out, at least be semi-real and show who you are and make the sure the picture is at least recent, like maybe within the last year, you're not five or 10 years old and, you know, kind of make sure that they're seeing some of who you are before you got your spandex and your fake weave and your wig and your eyelashes and all these other things on that really isn't you, but makes you look so much better, which I get it, but I don't get it because when we get home and you take it all off, uh, yeah, there's a, there might be a problem. So, anyway, just something, you know, I'm just drawing it out there. I mean, it's up to y'all, but I'm just drawing it out there. You know, at least be real. If you're going to do it, do it right. You know, be real. But with that being said, I'm going to play this next song, Fake Friends, from PS1, who talks about doing it real. Oh, 
So there you have it. That was PS1 with fake friends. And you know what? I was just be honest with you. Like she said, you know, people on Instagram, people on Facebook, people on dating apps, but they're not really being them. They're being someone that they know is going to get attention. So they're going to make you appear to see what you want to see because they just want you to take out. And I mean, I get that, but sooner or later, honey, it's not going to work. I mean, now, you know, if you just want to go out and just randomly have friends with benefits, then I get it. But if you're looking for a relationship, you might want to start with the truth from the beginning and, and not end it, you know, and decide, you know, midway that you're going to now let them know some things that, yeah, that, that what they see is not what they get. So also my thing is, I'm going to say this before I end this show. First of all, I already said that, you know, you got about 30 or 40 women out there than one man now. So it's not like it used to be. It means, you know, you got to really think about we have a lot more choices as to how many women we want to go to or approach. And basically, if we don't get with you, then, you know, we still got plenty of others to try with. But what I love that just is hysterical, so I'm just going to put it out there, is how women fail to realize the benefit or even the definition of money it's like women just don't realize you know the cost of living sometimes because i don't know about you but i don't mind going out and i don't mind taking care of the girl and you know being nice i mean i, I mean if i want to go if i want to go i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna go somewhere i normally go so of course i'm taking her to somewhere i like to go because i'm trying to show her what i do and how i eat my dining experience and of course it might be a three star maybe four star restaurant so that's all good and yeah it's going to be a little costly because i like good food quality food but the thing that gets me is they don't realize uh yeah you don't order the most expensive thing on the menu and keep ordering glasses of wine that's going to be about 15 to 20 a pop and think it's okay. I mean, don't get me wrong. It clearly shows me what kind of girl you are or what kind of woman you are. So it lets me know what I probably won't do it or if I even would deal with you the next time. But it's like, why are you going to go out and be that one? Why are you going to be the one that's going to be like, well, since I'm here, let me go ahead and just order everything because you know what? I'm not paying. So why not just enjoy myself? And then to make it things worse, you do that. And you're one of those girls that, surprisingly, and I'm going to say surprisingly because the majority of them don't do this anymore. You're one of those females that actually say, oh, well, you know, I like to take things slow. So, you know, don't expect anything. But I enjoyed my date and, you know, we can do this again sometime soon. And, you know, gives a hug. Yeah. I just spent $200 on you and I'm going to get a hug. Now, I'm not saying I should expect anything anyway because, I mean, you shouldn't. But I'm sorry. I can go get an escort today. That's going to cost me $200, $300. And guess what? I'm going to get everything I want. And pretty much what I see on the picture, that's what I'm going to get. So there is no guessing in that situation. And it's a make a phone call, do a charge. And next thing you know, she comes in the house and we get our play on and it's done and over. And I got exactly what I want and pay for it. And it's over. And that's another thing, girls. Y'all need to understand that there's a lot of men out there, especially wealthy, well-off men, that they're like, why am I going to get a girlfriend when I don't have to? I mean, I could just go ahead and get my Dodgers off or, you know, get my enjoyment sexually. Go ahead and give me a stripper or escort for a night and I'm done. And shh. Don't have to worry about spending additional funds on anything else. You know, just got to pay for the sex and that's our wrap. Don't have to worry about paying for dinners every time or presents or, you know, anniversaries or birthdays. or anything. So when you got a guy that actually wants to get with you, think about this, actually wants to get with you and actually have a relationship with you. And still wants to spend money on you. You might want to think about that opportunity. 
and really look at the advantages that you're being given and not take it for granted. And not saying that we should even look at the situation because we shouldn't, but I have to bring this out there too. I just have to say it. When you're a woman and you have a child, which unfortunately, you know, a lot of guys consider that baggage because they're dealing with someone else's kid who basically is not their kid and they don't know if that person is still dealing with that father or not. So, you know, when you are a single woman who is a single mother and you find someone who really wants to deal with you and your child and wants to give a relationship and offer you the opportunity of enjoyment and not only that, they want to take care of your child, like spend money on your child, like spend time with your child and try to be an affectionate male role figure for your child and a father figure for your child and you don't think this is a grand opportunity I'm simply going to say one thing clearly you are not thinking <laughs> because I'm sorry not many people are going to say oh yeah you got a kid oh sure why not I'll just go ahead and take you and your child when I got what 39 other girls out here who probably don't have a child because, like I said, for every one guy, there's about 40 girls out there not a single. So, yeah, I can probably find someone without a kid. But you know what? No, I'll take your child. I'll take your child in. I'll take you, and I'll take care of both of you. Uh, honey, if anything, that's like, literally, you know what he just told you? Let's put a smile on that face. <laughs> Because if he does that, you need to be basically screaming like you done won the lottery, girl. Because guess what? You done won the lottery. Because if that guy wants to do that for you, you better not second guess yourself. You better be like, where do I sign my name on the dotted line? And thank you, thank you, thank you. Because trust me, he's not doing it because he has to. He's not doing it because he's getting anything but you and that baby that's what he, he ain't getting like i'm going to do this and i'm going to get 10 years later a loan you know or a check for a hundred thousand dollars or something because you know there's an agreement this is a business agreement that i'm getting paid to do no he's doing this because he actually gives an am because he cares and because he's showing affection and love towards both of you and i don't understand I, I'm just going to, I just, I can't even, I can't even, that there are, there are females out there that get this rare opportunity, say the rare opportunity to get this, and they say no. Now, granted, if they did a background check, found some criminal act activity, you know, or they, you know, found out you were married five times. I mean, I get that if you did. But if you do a background check and you can't find nothing wrong with this guy and this guy is being nice to you and your child and actually is giving a shit. Bro, girl, 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 baby, you need to get on that shit because guess what? It ain't going to last long. And trust, if you say no, and after you go ahead and go back into the real world and realize that how much of a regretful mistake you made, and you try to come back, um, yeah, probably not going to happen. Probably, almost, most definitely not going to happen. And I don't think women fail to realize when an opportunity is given, that's a good opportunity. You might want to sit down for a moment. Don't be impulsive and sit down and think about it. And don't listen to your parents because a lot of times if your parents see that you're going to get a better opportunity than them, they're going to tell you as not to do it just because they're going to be like, you know what? No, hell no. My daughter ain't going to get a better man than I got. Fuck that. If I got fucked, she going to get fucked. I hate to say that, but guess what? A lot of times, 90% of the time, 
that's what your parents are thinking when they're telling, oh, no, he's not going to be good for you, or, yeah, he's going to cause problems, or, you know, in the long run, he's not going to really care for you like he does. Trust me, it's not all glim glitters and gold. What you see is not what you get. Trust me, there's not something, there's something wrong with it because it's just too perfect to be a great relationship, so it can't be a relationship that you can trust. Bullshit. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Trust me. Take the chance. Do the background check, probably. I will say that at least. Do the background check. Meet some of your friends and family. We'll definitely say that. But if you do all that and he still wants you, girl, you better take that fucking opportunity and kiss him and love him and treat him so nice because he was a one in a million. One in a million. Can I get an amen? One in a million. You know what? I'm preaching to the choir. I'm preaching to the choir. Because guess what? I've met some girls of my own. I offered, I offered that opportunity. And guess what? They said no. Met my family, met my friends. Got to stay with me. This one particular girl. Got to stay with me for three months. Took care of her child like it was my own. Loved him like it was my own. Family loved the child. I mean, it was great. Family took the girl in instantaneously as family. Gave her hugs and everything. I mean, she got the full carpet, red carpet treatment. And it wasn't fake. It was real. Real. You know, paying for pamphlets. Paying for clothing. Spending, still taking to nice restaurants, four star, five star restaurants, showing her the kind of life she can have. Even showed her the, the school her son was going to go to, what kind of school it was going to be, how they were ranked in education. Told her about how much money was going to be in a trust fund for her son that I already started for a four hundred one k. I mean, bro, I was being the perfect father, perfect dad, perfect man, and guess what? She said, quote unquote, I have to leave the relationship because you're not giving me enough affection. Listen to that. I have to leave the relationship because you're not giving me enough affection. Okay. But you're not going to think about the sacrifice that you could be giving because you're still getting affection. So it's not like you're getting none. You're getting affection. You're still getting love. You're still getting other things. You're just not getting everything you want, though, at this current time. And it's only been three months. Let's, let's just make sure you understand. It's only been 90 days. So, you know, not even six months or a year yet. And you're already complaining about not getting enough affection. But... You're getting everything you need to the point where you don't have to ask for anything or hope that you can get something because you're being taken care of and your child is being taken care of. And you discover after background check, meeting the family and friends, the man is actually a good man. So I'm not going to mention that girl's name. I'm, 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 I'm the gentleman here. See, I'm not going to ever... Spill of beans because I'm not that kind of guy. But I'm just going to say, that girl's listening right now. Just remember, you told me no. Just remember that. You told me no. And left me because you wasn't getting enough affection. Not, was you, not that you wasn't getting affection or that you could have gotten more affection, or that I told you if you had a problem, let's just communicate and we can always resolve situations. No, no, not, even though I said all that, did all that, you, you just, no, I'm just gonna get enough affection. So I'm just gonna say it, though I was told we can always fix something, because, you know, Alan's always open to talking and, you know, always wants to understand how you're feeling and want to make sure you're enjoying life. But no, you're just gonna go ahead and just be like, mm, nah, I'm just not gonna tell him, man. Then I'm going to make it his fault, and then I'm going to leave because, you know what, that's just the way I feel that, you know, even though he's being attached to my child and he actually gives a damn and actually cares about me, fuck it. Why should I care? I mean, why should I just be selfish 
Because you know what? That's who I am. Fuck him. It's all about me anyway, right? And she was an Aries. Not going to say anything, but she was an Aries. And though I'm a Sagittarius, I am not the Sagittarius that the Sagittarius is normally defined by. I'm the rare Sagittarius that actually likes to get a family, get with people, and love them and treat them with kindness and be a fucking gentleman and be the one that says, I'm going to give you what you deserve and what you need because you know what? I'm going to actually take care of you. Yeah, that's the guy I am. But all I got to say is, gentlemen, you find an Aries, unless you just want to fuck them or have friends with benefits, do not, I repeat, do not jump in with a relationship. You're only going to get your fucking self hurt. Don't do it. Please. SOS. Siren alert. Don't do it. Leave it alone. Okay. So, with that being said, I'm going to end it here because, oh, shit, I can go on and on about bullshit like this. But anyway, you've heard it. The relationships, the dating, totally different from 20 and 30 years now. And who knows how the hell it's going to be 20 or 30 years from today. All I got to say is just be careful, be safe. Be aware and pay attention. And if you get an opportunity that's golden, don't be stupid. Take the opportunity because guess what? It's not going to ever come back again. I guarantee you. Okay? So, with that being said, this is Alan Cousin from your Daily Dose of Shit. And as always, all the music that you heard was on Get Up Radio, which you can go to getupradio.com or you can go ahead and go to our app, Radio App on Google Play and also Radio App on iTunes because you know what? We love to make sure that you are entertained and we love to make sure that we get the musicians that entertain you. And yes, we make sure and pay royalties to these musicians because you know what? It's a job. They deserve their payment. So we, we're actually doing everything legitimately. So... Download our app, enjoy 24-7, it's free currently, have fun, and as always, get up with life, music, the world, like get up radio, baby, but right now, just remember every day from Monday to Friday, come back and listen to Alan Cousin as, as he gives you his daily dose of shit of the thoughts he had while he was sitting on the toilet. Thank you, Alan Cousin, signing off. Thanks for listening to your, your daily, daily dose, dose of shit, shit talk show. If you have some insights, questions, or information of bullshit to pass on, please email us at momentousevents at AOL.com. Make sure to come back daily to hear some new shit about money, business, life, and who knows what else. As I take a dump on the toilet.